right, so we're here with Chris from LumaTouch, uh, which is a iPad editing app and probably a little bit more. So uh, he's going to run us through it, and then I'm going to interrupt him a bunch like I normally do. <laughs> Take it away, sir. Um, all right, so let's give a little demo of multicam. So we'll start by creating a multicam container on the timeline. And the first thing we're going to do is come into the synchronizer, of course, and we want to get our media onto there. We have did a, um, actually, it's a, basically six cameras plus audio that we did of a, of a music video shoot. And I'm just going to select them all. And I'm going to drag them all at once. I could drag them one at a time, but LumaFusion will be smart about putting the audio on its primary audio track and rearranging these by camera number. So um, it'll do that. Next step, of course, is to synchronize audio. And we have a number of ways of synchronizing audio. It'll use time code if that's available. Love it. Um, it will, um, of course, sync by audio, which is what we're doing right now because we didn't have time code. This was all done with iPhones for this particular shoot. Do you, can it do FTC time code? It, we are adding that fairly soon. That'll cool. be coming relatively soon. That's the audio time code yeah, for anyone. Yeah, the linear, yeah, exactly. And so um, that's coming. LTC. Uh, LTC, LTC, right. Yeah. Yep, linear time code. And uh, all right, and then once we have these on here, I had to pick one that took a little longer, but you can get an idea of, you know, for doing six tracks of video, it, it's, yeah. it takes a and little while. they're all while. four minutes long. Yeah, that's right. So it takes a little while to do the, the audio. But we have a, we spend a lot of time on the audio synchronization algorithms. Um, it, we actually use three different algorithms and then choose whatever picks, the, you know, finds the best synchronization oh, cool. during it. So uh, that's something we've been working on. While it's doing this, I'll also talk about we have some free features coming in the new version as well, including a vice, voice isolation filter, which is really useful um, for things as well. So here now, it's, it's synchronized the audio. If for some reason something's wrong, we can also manually sync and nudge clips the way we want them. Um, but we'll go ahead and just start doing a little cutting just so we can quickly get to that here. But you can see we have um, we can look at our angles here and, you know, take a look. And when see. it says 25%, uh, 30%, what is that? Uh, confidence? Oh, <laughs> that's an internal thing. That is confidence in, in the synchronization. That actually doesn't show up for our users. That's an internal building. Right, <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, but, but that's one of the ways we tested along the way to see how confident our you know, algorithm was that it got us a good sync. In this case, it got it perfectly, but we it's just an algorithmic yeah. way of deciding. It nailed know, it, but it wasn't confident. Yeah, it, but it, it. It, it's not confident. That's exactly right. <laughs> got so, low self-esteem. Yeah, that's right. So let's go to the switcher here. And now we're ready to start switching. And that's the fun part of it, of course. We can just start playing and start switching oh, sure, the beat, yeah, you know, it. and just have some fun with it. And back and forth. I'll just do a few more cuts here. Just so you can see all the different angles. And so you can really, it's almost performative in, in yeah. your editing, which I really think is one of the fun parts of multicam. Yeah. Um, while you're still in the switcher, you can edit any of these cuts. So let's say for this cut, I really wanted a different angle. I can quickly switch angles. Um, nice. And then um, I can, of course, do roll trims to, you know, if I didn't quite get my cut exactly right and get that perfect. Then come back to the timeline. One of the unique things we did here is we treat a multicam clip two different ways. We can treat it as a one big single clip, so you can move the whole interview or music video or whatever you want around, or you can then come in and edit each individual cut individually. And so it's nice that the you know the nest, as it were, yeah. shows you where the clips are because that's exactly. one thing. Then Premiere is kind of frustrating. Exactly. You're like, where where like, is it? Yeah, yeah. And, and so you know, we looked at all the other you know multicam editors, and we said, you know, how can we both make it you know intuitive, easy to use, and a little different than what's out there. The other thing you'll see is that we've made the primary audio on its own track so that you can see that it's not being cut by each of the angles here. Um, and you can edit any way you want on this. You know, you can either edit with a, multi with a primary audio clip or not edit with a pr uh, primary audio clip. One of the things I forgot to show you also is you can configure each track to use different audio. So let's say when track three, when angle three is visible, I want track four's audio to play. I can do that. And when I'm switching, it'll just automatically do for it for me. And of course, I can come in here in the synchronizer and do any kind of you know color correction, anything I need there. And that'll show up in any of the angles that, um, you know, that use that same cut. And then I can add additional effects um, on each individual cut within here Lots as well. support, I assume? Uh, yes, of course. We have, um, and that's one thing recently we changed um, is we now support multiple LUTs per clip, so you can have your camera LUT and style LUTs and oh good, uh, so like yeah. your color space transform exactly. and then your color and then, and then you're, exactly, and um, so that makes a really big difference in being able to do more things, and um, yeah, and you can import Cube and 3DL LUTs, so oh, cool. uh, yeah, awesome. so that makes it really easy to work with. So that's a little quick overview of multicam and. Um, yeah, it's just a really great feature. One of the, a couple of the other things we added in the new version as well is um, some really nice, let me bring up um, 
Those clips probably don't have audio on them, so let me really quickly. Oh, and I was wondering what that button was. You can upload this all to Frame.io. Absolutely, yeah. And we pull have pull down from Frame.io. We have a complete so. integration for Frame.io where Frame.io will show up in our library. You'll see all the comments on there. If you've done you know, graphical comments, they'll show up in our preview. Oh, and nice. you can upload and get comments back on your timeline and, and be able to edit that as markers, Wonderful. exactly. And so, yeah, we have a really tight integration. And I don't know if you know, um, Dropbox is also doing something similar to Frame.io. They have a new service called Replay that's coming out fairly soon. Mm. And uh, it's a similar service. Service and we've integrated that as well. You, you actually have, uh, if you could bring that. Yeah, up. absolutely. You, you have a lot. I'd like to just call it out. Yeah. A lot of really interesting integrations. You got obviously Google Drive, yeah. Dropbox, but like Narbox, which yeah. is a very specific piece of hardware. Right. Western Digital, and then Storyblocks. <laughs> right. Storyblocks. We actually integrate Storyblocks. It's a you know full royalty free um, library that you can add on as an optional subscription in Luma in LumaFusion, and it gives you access to an amazing library of yeah. B-roll footage, music, whatever you need for it. Um, that's really a lot of fun. So let me quickly just throw in a clip that has audio so that I can show you. One of the things that we, in the past, I felt a little weak with was some of our audio UI for some of our filters. And so we've really upped our game on that where all oh, of our wonderful. audio filters now have great graphical UIs and uh, you know so that you can see what you're doing and work with it really nicely. Um, I love so the, the previews as well. Yeah, <laughs> that makes it nice. And here's, you know, I mentioned the voice isolation filter, which really does an amazing job. It's a machine learning based isolation filter that Apple produced and we're in, using within the app. and. Uh, um, it's just great stuff. And so, so you know, it, and you always have all the full power of LumaFusion here, you know, great multi-track editor that, you know, that you'll be immediately be familiar with and has all the power of a desktop, you know, editor, but you can do it on your iPhone or iPad. Um, Carolyn Scott, who does a lot of our videos, you know, she did a full four camera shoot on her iPhone and edited it on her iPhone, and it's just amazing, you know? Yeah. So people are doing stuff that we never imagined they'd be able to do. Uh, so in terms of, obviously, if you have one of the new uh, iPad Pros, you know, yes. that M2 chip is insane. Yes. Um, so I imagine with this, maybe not raw, could it handle like raw um, formats? Or right now, what's kind of our top speed on one of these? Yeah, it, well, let me give you a demonstration. Sure. This is not a feature that's in the app yet, but it's coming. Here are, 16 tracks of 4K video playing on an M2. What codec? Um, this one is uh, H.264 at the moment. Wow, so, okay. Yeah, and um, but we support all, all versions of ProRes except RAW right now. Sure. And when Apple supports that on these, which I think they will, they'll come out with that support, we will support it as well. And so, um, so yeah, what we support is any H.264, any H.265, and any ProRes except for ProRes RAW. I mean, uh, especially 5 can get real chuggy, yeah. so yeah. that's... Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's really impressive. So in, in a future update, we will allow for um, up to 16 tracks of video. That's amazing. Is there a minimum spec I, I've um, had that maybe you recommend? Yeah. <laughs> now, it will run on any iPad that is iOS 15.4 or higher. So that's actually all the way back to the fifth generation iPad. Now, I would recommend maybe eighth generation or above for normal editing. Um, for anything with two, three, four tracks, you know, if you're doing six track edits and things like that, then I probably would recommend an iPad Pro M1 or higher, you know, would, would certainly make your life smoother yeah. and more enjoyable. I've, I've always been, kind of, you know, a giant nerd my whole life, kind of a PC guy, but yeah. when the when the M1 and M2 chips came out, I was like, all right, well, you can't argue with that. Like, they're really good. Uh, I was wondering if you could show me, like, because I'm actually not very familiar with the product, just uh, like the main kind of timeline yeah, you know, what, showing us yeah. like where bins are and stuff like right. that. Right, okay, so yeah, let's go through the basics of it. So, you know, up here, now we don't have bins in the organization, but you can organize it into folders, you know, using the, uh, the files app at the moment. That's something we're going to be doing. So, you do organize by um, the certain providers. Now, linked folders allows you to link to other apps as well as um, external drives. Okay, so, for cool. example, I can edit, yesterday, using this OWC GoDoc, I, we had three different drives hooked up and we're pulling media off of all of them live, at, you know, editing off of those drives. So you don't have to bring it onto the device and use your device storage. Mm -hmm. You can edit directly from SSD drives. Wonderful. But, you know, a lot of the time it is easier to have it on your device. You don't have to have a drive hooked up and you can just edit on your iPad, you know, and be there. And so that's that's where the imported folder is, and this just mimics what's on the device itself, so you can go into files and rearrange it into, you know, um, any kind of organization you want. And of course, we also fully integrate with, you know, whatever's in your photos library that you've taken on the, you know, device, um, right, and right, it's organized right. by albums and everything else. So then, you know, once you're in here, um, 
let's just take a look at a little of the, the video here. You can do a lot with your media, of course. You can color tag. You can, of course, do your mark in and mark out. You can uh, rename it. You can add notes to it. You can get all the information about the codex and everything else that you want with it and any, any other metadata that's there. And then it's simply a matter of start dragging to the timeline. And, you know, that's where the touch interface really makes a difference in editing. You know, actually physically touching your media has a different feel than using a mouse to edit with. And it, Absolutely. It's, it's uniquely different. Now, on our timeline, it's sort of interesting. You'll, our timeline will feel familiar, particularly to Final Cut users, because it's a magnetic timeline. So, you know, if I immediately start, you know, whoops, I must be in overwrite mode here, which is one of the things I'll show you. Uh, so we're, you know, in insert mode. Did I switch? Okay. Oh, I must have everything unlinked right now, so. I should have done a better demo. Okay, let's go back here. <laughs> so, um, so you can see that all the clips that are linked move with it, and right. so it keeps everything in sync. But you know, so every once in a while, that really messes you up when you need something to stay where it is. So we made an enhanced magnetic timeline where whenever you want, you can unlink either individual clips or a complete track. So now you'll see these two clips are staying where Wonderful. they are, and you know you can lock down tracks when you need to. You can hide tracks. So we've made a nice mix between you know, the final cut style of magnetic timeline and the more traditional, you know, track-based editing, and you can mix and match the way you want to work with it. And, and I think that's one of the important things. Now, when you're ready to work with- I like with this mini timeline as well. Exactly, yeah, our timeline navigator, you know, really makes it easy to see your overall edit and get to what you want, you know, very quickly. Um, we use a lot of, you know, if you need frame by frame, well, you can use gestures for oh. frame by frame. We've got a full range of keyboard shortcuts, and we've actually matched our keyboard shortcuts to final cut so that, you know, if you're used to that, it'll be pretty quick to move over, you know, and use keyboard shortcuts here. Um, when you're ready to go, you know, do some individual editing on clips, you basically double clip, click on a clip, and you'll come into our clip editor. And it's an interesting thing. We did the clip editor separately originally because we had to on early iPads. Just, you know, we couldn't keep everything live. But we found that it really lets you focus on the clip you're working on rather than have all the chrome of everything else in your right, timeline right. in here. And so it turned out to be a really nice way to work. Oh, so, that's you, nice. you know, focus on it, do your things. You know, we've got full speed editor. We've got, um, we use uh, CoreMelt's lock and load stabilization in here for video stabilization. That's been really popular. Of course, a whole range of different video filters, including third-party plug-in filters. Any audio VSTs? units? Uh, well, they're AU units on, okay. um, on on iOS, so most of them also have VSTs, but yeah, you just have to install them a little differently on here. And then we have a reasonable range of color adjustment tools. I won't quite call it color correction. We're not a full color corrector in right. here. Um, but, you know, again, as I, we mentioned before, we the basics it, yeah, we have the good basics in here, plus the ability to use LUTs. And so it gives you all you want. And then a whole wide range of, you know, fun effects that you can do, blurs, chroma key, everything else that you need um, to get the job done. We also do have full video scopes. Wonderful. Uh, Okay, cool. And so, and you can rearrange those any way you want. You have controls for each of those to, you know, to get all the tools you want. Um, so yeah, we've really built up the product little by little, making it more and more of a professional editor while still being fun to edit on. Absolutely. I, I did have one question, and this is because obviously with, you know, touch screen editing is not common. Yeah. Um, and one thing I think about a lot with certain apps, when I want to move it just a little bit, I, yes. I feel like I have to roll my finger, finger. Yes, and it never works right. Right now, there's two ways to do that here, and and so number one, you know, you can actually triple tap and zoom into to a frame by frame view here. Cool. And so that's where we have the nice swipes to do frame by frame. We also have a little secret control here to do, you know, oh, cool. slow jog, you know, um, between it, and you know, and, and when that works with uh, pulling in and out points as well. Yes, absolutely, yes, and um, and then of course keyboard shortcuts where you know you. Can get to the time you need and then just you know do a cut you know so we we've really I think gotten around most of those limitations but you do have to learn some new ways of doing things if sure. you're gonna if you're gonna work that way but it's it's fairly quick and easy to learn go out to your full timeline come in you know do some adjustments it, it gets pretty quick and easy and you know if you watch somebody who's really good at it like Caroline over here um, they're just Masters at it, yeah. yeah, you know, and and but I'm someone who uses it for editing very seldom, and I can still quickly get back into it because it is pretty intuitive. Yeah, it's very cool, man. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you, with us. appreciate it. Yeah.